Questions and Answers Many people in this world have a great deal of interest in the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and have sent us questions through different kinds of media, including the internet. Here we try to answer some questions, which we regard as either the most frequently asked or most important. Question 1. I believe in Jesus, and I think I have received perfect remission of sins. I also believe that the Holy Spirit dwells within me. I know a person who has been saved as a temple of God. Every time I go astray and commit a sin, the Holy Spirit restores my relationship with God anew by accusing me and helping me to confess my sin to obtain forgiveness for it. I learned that if I didn't do this, God would punish me. Is it really true that the Holy Spirit does not dwell within us for a while unless we confess our sins and are forgiven for them? Answer. This is definitely not the case. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit does not depend on us, whether we do something righteous or not. In other words, it doesn't depend on our will or wishes. Then how can it be achieved? The Holy Spirit doesn't dwell in a person because he or she confesses their sins and is pardoned for them. Instead, the Holy Spirit dwells within someone forever when he or she receives forgiveness for sins by believing in the gospel of the water and the Spirit. The Holy Spirit cannot dwell in a person who possesses even the slightest amount of sin. However, many people think that the Holy Spirit dwells in them only if they confess their sins and beg for forgiveness, and that if they don't, He won't dwell within them. This is definitely wrong. The Bible says that He came on the apostles on the day of the Pentecost, but we should keep in mind that they received the indwelling of the Holy Spirit not through their prayers, but because they were forgiven for their sins by having come to believe in the gospel of the water and the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, and He comes upon the righteous who have been sanctified by receiving forgiveness for their sins. What the Bible means by the word holy is to be apart from sin. Taking away your sins by confessing and praying for forgiveness whenever you commit a transgression is not perfect forgiveness in the sight of God. How dare anyone say such that he can confess all his sins without omission before God? Only those who believe that Jesus was baptized by John and shed his blood on the cross according to God's plan for their salvation receive perfect forgiveness of their sins altogether. Receive perfect forgiveness for their sins together with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit as a gift from God. However, the reason why many people try to receive the Holy Spirit through their own efforts is that because they haven't received perfect forgiveness for the sins in their hearts. The true Holy Spirit doesn't come upon people through confession. He automatically comes upon them only when they are forgiven for all their sins by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit. This is an essential element of faith in order to receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit before God. The Holy Spirit doesn't come by any kind of effort or deed on our part. He comes upon a person if his sins are forgiven perfectly by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit. We are forgiven for all our sins by believing that Jesus took on the sins of the world through his baptism by John in the Jordan River almost 2,000 years ago. The Holy Spirit can only dwell in a person who exhibits this kind of faith. He cannot dwell in a person who has sin in his heart. This is the truth. If a person asks for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit through confession every time he sins instead of faith in the true gospel, he can never receive the Holy Spirit. This only shows that he still has sin in his heart, even though he believes in Jesus. Satan is the one who condemns us. In Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it is written, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Even though one claims to have definitely received the forgiveness of sin and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, if one hasn't been forgiven for all sins by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit, sin remains in the heart. This is why you have to have accurate knowledge of the gospel of the water and the spirit in order to receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. If you want to learn about the gospel of the water and the spirit in more detail, we cordially recommend you to read Paul C. Young's first volume, Have You Truly Been Born Again of Water and the Spirit? Question 2. Does the Holy Spirit dwell within a born-again person all of the time if he or she believes in the gospel of the water and the Spirit, or does the Holy Spirit hover around them and come into them whenever they ask for help? Answer: The Holy Spirit is the helper. In other words, the Spirit of truth whom God has given to all righteous people who have been born again of water and the Spirit, ever since Jesus Christ was baptized by John the Baptist, died on the cross and resurrected. 
John chapter 15, verse 26. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 says, In him you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The Holy Spirit comes upon the righteous who have received forgiveness for their sins by believing in Jesus Christ and thereby seals them as children of God. In John chapter 4, verse 16, the Lord says, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Jesus' disciples received forgiveness for all their sin by believing that Jesus took on all the sins of the world through his baptism. This was why John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John chapter 1 verse 29. The sins of the world are all the sins that all the people of this world have been committing from the beginning until the end of the world. He accepted all the sins of the world at once, died on the cross, was resurrected, and thereby made us righteous forever. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12 through 14, it is written, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, from that time waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by the offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. The Lord was baptized by John, was crucified, and then resurrected, and thereby made us righteous forever. We were forgiven for all our sins at once and became God's children through Jesus, and this truth is immutable for all eternity. Those who have become righteous through faith don't have sin in their hearts. Even though people cannot help but sin due to their weaknesses, they have no sin forever because Jesus took away all their sins. Therefore, they can never become sinners again. The Holy Spirit dwells eternally in the hearts of the righteous who have been sanctified. We cannot but sin due to our insufficiencies, but if we would become sinners every time we sin, then the gift of Jesus Christ, who made us righteous forever, would be wasted, and he would have to die for us again after accepting our sins. This is the sin of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Hebrews chapter 6 verses 4 through 8, chapter 10 verses 26 through 29. Accordingly, the Holy Spirit dwells within the righteous who have received forgiveness for their sins and have been born again by believing in the gospel of the water and the Spirit. Paul said, For you are the temple of the living God. As for God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 The Holy Spirit always dwells in God's children who have been sanctified forever. The word dwell here doesn't mean that he hovers around us then comes to us whenever we pray and call for him. Instead, he always abides in us. He always lives in those who have been born again of water and the Spirit, teaching them all things and leading them to know God's words. John chapter 14 verse 26. Therefore, anyone who doesn't have the Holy Spirit of God is not his. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. The Holy Spirit dwells in those who are purified and sinless, teaching them all heavenly things and testifying that they are the children of God. It is not true that the Holy Spirit is near us, coming to us as a price for our own efforts. Instead, He always dwells in God's children who have been born again by the gospel of the water and the Spirit. However, many people lack knowledge of this and try to receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit with their sinful hearts. As a result, they think that He comes upon them when they put effort into their fervent prayers of repentance, but that He leaves when they sin. This is the faith of those who have not received the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Those who have true faith believe that they receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit as a gift through the forgiveness of sins. One should forsake one's own thoughts and return to the faith in God's word. Question 3 Both of my parents insisted that they were born-again Christians even before they got married. Additionally, I have led a religious life from birth. I thought that the Holy Spirit had been within me from the time I was born, However, I am so confused because I don't have the biblical knowledge about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Does the Holy Spirit really come upon a person only if he is born again of the water and the Spirit? Yes, this is true. Everyone needs to have his sins forgiven by believing in the gospel of the water and the Spirit in order to receive the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that water is the anti-type of salvation. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21 Here the water stands for the baptism Jesus received from John. Matthew chapter 3, verse 15. First of all, everyone needs to be forgiven for all his sins by knowing the meaning of the baptism of Jesus in order to receive the Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 3, verse 27 says, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. 
Here, being baptized into Christ doesn't indicate our water baptism, but means receiving the forgiveness of sins by understanding and believing in the reason for Jesus' baptism by John. Everyone is born in a sinful body. Romans chapter 5 verse 12 says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned. All the people in this world are born sinners, inheriting sin from Adam and Eve. Therefore, in Psalms chapter 51 verse 5, it is written, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 4, it's written, Alas, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a broad of evildoers, children who are corruptors. People have the seeds of sin starting from the day they are born. All the people in this world inherit sins from their parents and are born into this world as sinners. In other words, our flesh is bound to bear the fruits of sin during our lifetime. That is why thinking that if both of someone's physical parents are born-again Christians, then their children will also receive the Holy Spirit, is merely a credulous and superstitious faith. He who has this kind of faith tries to receive the Holy Spirit through his own thoughts, and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit cannot occur with this kind of faith. Therefore, everyone should believe in the gospel of the water and the Spirit that Jesus gave us. This is the only way to receive the Holy Spirit, because he is a gift from God. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, took on all the sins of the world by being baptized by John, then was judged on the cross and thereby made all believers of the truth righteous. This is God's plan and will toward mankind, and he has given the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to those who have faith in it according to his will. Everyone in this world is born with his own sin into this world. Therefore, he can receive the Holy Spirit as a gift only if he receives the forgiveness of sins and becomes sanctified by believing in the gospel of the water and the Spirit. Therefore, everyone should keep it in mind and also believe that the Holy Spirit comes upon him only when he is born again of water and the Spirit. He does not come upon us depending on some kind of condition or effort we make, but his indwelling is entirely made up to the faithfulness of the one who made the promise. In other words, if he doesn't come to dwell according to any human or spiritual achievement, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit can be received by faith according to God's will. His will was to send Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, into this world in order to save all mankind from the sins of the world by having him baptized by John and having him die on the cross, thereby allowing the Holy Spirit to dwell in the hearts of believers. The righteous who are delivered from all their sins by obeying his will and by believing in the gospel of the water and the Spirit can receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, believing that one has received the Holy Spirit just because he was born of born-again parents is a superstitious and credulous faith. This is just like trying to receive the Holy Spirit according to his own will regardless of God's will. There is no other way but to believe in the gospel of the water and the Spirit if one wants to receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Question 4. I think the Holy Spirit speaks to us every day. Even in the time of the early church, Jesus' disciples performed many miracles. I think the Holy Spirit who worked at that time is still working today in the same way. Therefore, many men of God perform miracles in Jesus' name, for example, casting out demons or healing diseases and doing other works aimed at returning people to Jesus. I think these works are done through the Holy Spirit. If this is not true, what is the difference between the Holy Spirit that is strongly worked at the time of the early church and the one who performs miracles today? Is not God always the same yesterday, today, and forever? There is no real difference between the Holy Spirit who worked at the time of the early church and the one who works today. The only difference is whether the people who perform miracles at this time believe in the gospel of the water and the Spirit. The reason for this is that even though the Spirit of God is always the same regardless of time, the difference is whether one has accurate knowledge of the way to receive the Holy Spirit. Many people nowadays perform wonders without having accurate biblical knowledge to receive the Holy Spirit. The Bible shows us in Acts chapter 2 verse 38, 1 John chapter 5 verses 2 through 8, and 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 21, that the only way to receive the Holy Spirit is to believe in the gospel of the water and the Spirit. There is also an antitype which now saves us, baptism. Of course, the Holy Spirit did things like healing diseases and casting out demons while dwelling in the apostles at the time of the early church. However, they didn't receive money or cause uproar while using their spiritual gifts, like some people nowadays tend to do. 
The apostles demonstrated their abilities only as a means of delivering the gospel. Furthermore, healing disease and casting out demons were not all of the works of the Holy Spirit at the time of the early church. They were only a small part of it. Therefore, it is very dangerous to think that all the wonders such as healing disease, casting out demons, and speaking in tongues in today's Christianity are surely the works of the Holy Spirit. We should believe that all the peculiar phenomena we see with our eyes in Christianity today are not caused by the power of the Holy Spirit. Instead, we should discern the true servants of God who have received the indwelling of the Holy Spirit from the fraudulent servants who are possessed by evil spirits. Even if a person can cast out demons, heal disease, and speak in tongues, if he has sin in his heart and does not believe in the true gospel, he is surely possessed by demons. Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 7, verses 20-23, through 23, Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophecies in your name? cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. We should not think that just because one performs miracles, he is doing it through the work of the Holy Spirit. Instead, we should examine closely if he preaches the gospel of the water and the Spirit, or if he is righteous by having received complete forgiveness for his sins. The Holy Spirit never dwells in a person who has sin in his heart. The Holy Spirit cannot be along with sin. The forgiveness of sin at the time of the early church was the proof of the coming of the Holy Spirit, and he was God's gift to those who were forgiven for all their sins. However, many people still think that healing disease, speaking in tongues, and casting out demons in Jesus' name was unconditionally the work of the Holy Spirit. This is a wrong and dangerous belief. We should be able to clearly tell if they are truly performing wonders. Even if a person is able to perform many wonders in Jesus' name, but if he doesn't know or believe in the true gospel of the water and the spirit, then he must be a false teacher. Such people kill the souls of many people and demand money in order to satisfy their worldly greed. Therefore, the work of a person who has sin in his heart is not truly the work of the Holy Spirit, but the work of demons. The Holy Spirit who worked at the time of the early church and the one working now is the same. However, there is a clear difference between the work of the Holy Spirit that appears to people who have really received the Holy Spirit and that of demons who appeared through false prophets. Question 5. What does the Holy Spirit do at this time? Answer. The Holy Spirit at this time clearly does the work of discerning the true teachings from the false in the Word of God. He preaches the gospel of the water and the Spirit, which the Lord gave us, to souls who are dying due to iniquity in this time of confusion in order to save them. We should know that there are many false prophets working inside Christianity today throughout the world. Even though they have sin in their hearts, they are still doing wrong, speaking in tongues, performing false wonders, and having visions. To the confused souls of this age, the Holy Spirit, the Helper, convicts the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. John chapter 16 verse 8. First of all, the spirit of truth convicts mankind of sin. Sin in the sight of God is not to believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit that God gave us. He convicts those who don't believe in the beautiful gospel of Jesus' baptism by John the Baptist and his blood on the cross, warning them that they are sinners destined for hell. He also bears witness to God's righteousness. Here, the meaning of God's righteousness is that God sent Jesus into this world in the appearance of a man in order for him to accept all the sins of the world. He helps people who believe in Jesus receive the forgiveness of sin by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit. He also warns that those who don't obey the true gospel despite knowing the will of God will later be judged for their sins. In the beginning, when God created the world with his word, the Holy Spirit worked with him and later shone in the light of truth on the empty and confused hearts of mankind in order to illuminate the gospel of the water and the spirit. Genesis chapter 1 verses 2 through 3. Thus the Holy Spirit enlightens the confused souls of this age of their sins, on God's righteousness, and on the judgment for their sins. Question 6. Isn't speaking in tongues proof of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? Otherwise, how can we know if he dwells in us? Answer. We can't assure that one has received the indwelling of the Holy Spirit just because they speak in tongues. Even demon-possessed people can speak in tongues. 
You should know that devils could make people speak in strange tongues fluently under the name of Jesus Christ. If we say that speaking in tongues is proof of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, then this is definitely incorrect from a biblical standpoint and puts us into the sin of blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 30 says, Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Because the Holy Spirit is God's Spirit. He can by no means be with sin, and neither can he dwell in a person who has sin in his heart. We should not believe that one has received the Holy Spirit just because he speaks in tongues, but should first examine if he has received the forgiveness of sin by believing in the gospel of the water and the Spirit. If someone thinks that he has received the Holy Spirit just because he has some kind of special experience, such as speaking in tongues, it could be that he is being tricked by a shrewd deception of Satan. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 The Holy Spirit is a gift that is given by God to people who have received the forgiveness of sin through his words. In answer to the second question, the Holy Spirit is God himself and the Spirit of truth. Therefore, he works together with the gospel of the water and the Spirit. He does not work according to human will. He leads sinners to believe in the gospel of the water and the Spirit, teaches the truth to the righteous, and also quietly preaches the gospel, which is God's will, together with them. He doesn't come on people with fire-like emotions or irresistible vibrations of bodies. God gave the Holy Spirit to the righteous, whose sins were blotted out by obeying the true gospel of the water and the Spirit. He taught them that they have become God's children. The Holy Spirit testifies in the heart of the righteous that they have become sinless and completely righteous through the gospel of the water and the Spirit. Therefore, if someone speaks in tongues but still has sin in his heart, the Spirit in him is definitely not the Holy Spirit, but the Spirit of Satan. If you want to have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in your heart, you should believe in the gospel of the water and the Spirit. Then the Lord will bless you with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Question 7 Did Jesus' disciples receive the Holy Spirit by being delivered from their sins through the forgiveness of sin, or was it a separate experience without regard to forgiveness of sin? Receiving the Holy Spirit is not a separate experience from redemption. We can see in the Bible that Jesus' disciples already knew and believed that Jesus took away all the sins of the world through his baptism by John even before they received the Holy Spirit. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21 There is also an antitype which now saves us, baptism. The forgiveness of sins means salvation from sin. In other words, it means all sins in our hearts are washed away and gone. Nowadays, many Christians are often confused about the meaning of the forgiveness of sins that Jesus gave us. People do not know how they can receive the forgiveness of sin. They think that they have been delivered from their sins simply because they believe in Jesus as their Lord. Those who have received forgiveness for their sins have the witness in themselves. However, if someone doesn't have the witnessing word of his redemption, then he has not received the Holy Spirit nor was forgiven for all his sins. If he has spirit-filled feelings... It is only the result of being deceived by his own emotions. Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 14 through 15, Galatians chapter 1 verses 7 through 9, deceiving him into straying from the truth. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 through 23. Those who are forgiven for their sins have the witness in them because they believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit. In 1 John chapter 5 verses 4 through 12. God bears witness into Jesus Christ, who came by water and blood. Furthermore, he says if one preaches about a different spirit or a different gospel, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 4, then he has not received the forgiveness of sin nor the Holy Spirit. People can receive the forgiveness of sin only when they believe in Jesus Christ, who came by the gospel of the water and the Spirit. Receiving the Holy Spirit is crucial to the forgiveness of sin. The forgiveness of sin is crucial to the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Question 8 What does it mean to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Answer We should know the reason for Jesus' baptism. Paul preached the gospel of Jesus' baptism to some Ephesians when he heard that they were only baptized into John's baptism. They were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and received the Holy Spirit in their hearts by believing what Paul said about Jesus' baptism. The nature of the baptism Jesus received from John and that of John's baptism of repentance were different. Jesus' baptism was to wash away sins, which was directly related to our receiving the Holy Spirit. 
Then what was the nature of John's baptism? He shouted, Repent, brood of vipers. Forsake foreign gods you were serving, and return to the true God. His baptism was that of repentance, which made people return to God. However, the baptism Jesus received from John was in order for him to take over all the sins of the world. This is the difference between John's baptism and Jesus' baptism by John. Jesus' baptism was to fulfill all righteousness. It is the baptism through which Jesus took away all the sins of mankind, starting from Adam to the last person in the world. In other words, Jesus' baptism by John was to fulfill all righteousness. To fulfill all righteousness means that God let his son be baptized by John to take all the sins of the world onto him so that he could be judged for us by being crucified on the cross. God raised Jesus from the dead and sanctified all believers. This was done for all mankind. Jesus' baptism and his blood on the cross brought us eternal salvation, forgiveness for all our sins, and the chance to live together with God forever. This is God's righteousness, love, and salvation for all mankind. Here we can confirm that the baptism of the Holy Spirit was fulfilled through Jesus' baptism and his blood on the cross. In order to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, we need to have the witness of believing that all the sins of this world were passed on to Jesus through his baptism. Everyone who has received the forgiveness of sin by believing in Jesus' baptism and his blood on the cross should be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we are baptized as the proof of our faith in Jesus' baptism and in line with his commandment, saying, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 Jesus was baptized by John in order to take away all the sins of the world, and because this truth leads people to receive the Holy Spirit, so it is also called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Question 9 how does the Holy Spirit appear differently in the Old and New Testaments? Answer. The Holy Spirit is the same God regardless of time. However, His divine nature doesn't change no matter whether we read about Him in the Old or New Testaments. However, it is true that He worked differently in the Old and New Testaments by God's providence in order to save mankind from their sins. In the Old Testament, God poured the Holy Spirit to men of God by special methods in order to speak His words, to show his will through wonders, and to do his work. For example, the Spirit of the Lord began to move upon Samson the judge, thereby doing many mighty works through him. Judges chapter 13 verse 25, chapter 14 verse 19. In other words, the Holy Spirit came on elected people restrictively at the time of the Old Testament. However, at the time of the New Testament, by designating the day of Pentecost as the starting point for the coming of the Holy Spirit, God sent the Holy Spirit to every saint who has received the forgiveness of sins through their faith in the gospel of the water and the Spirit. And he permits the Holy Spirit dwells in them forever. Therefore, after the apostles were filled with the Holy Spirit on the first Pentecost after Jesus Christ's resurrection, all the righteous whose sins were forgiven by believing the gospel of truth can have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Peter went into the house of Cornelius, a Gentile and a centurion of Rome, and preached the gospel of Jesus' baptism and his blood on the cross. While Peter was speaking to the gospel, the Holy Spirit fell upon everyone who heard the word, Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 45. This proves that the moment one hears and believes in the gospel of Jesus' baptism and his cross, which Jesus has fulfilled, he receives the Holy Spirit as a gift. God caused the Holy Spirit to dwell in all the righteous who were forgiven for all their sins by believing in the true gospel. The Holy Spirit in the Old Testament played the role of leading people to Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the New Testament bears witness to God's righteousness and stands as the guarantee for it. God's righteousness means that Jesus forgave all the sins of the world through his baptism and his blood on the cross. And the Holy Spirit stands as a guarantee of the gospel of salvation and helps everyone believe in it. Question number 10. I spent many sad days after the doctor diagnosed my case as a stomach cancer. One day, a Christian friend of mine visited me and told me that anyone attending a revival meeting at his church would be healed of any kind of disease. To me, an atheist at that time, the healing of disease by God's power seemed too good to be true. On the last day of the meeting, everyone came up to the minister to receive the laying on of his hands. 
While he laid his hands on me, he told me to repeat some inapprehensible words and ask me if I believed in Jesus Christ's healing power. Even though I didn't truly believe in my heart, I was upset and answered yes. And right at that moment, I felt something hot like electricity running through me. I could feel my whole body quivering, and I felt that my cancer was cured. I decided to believe in the Lord on the spot, and after that, a great happiness and peace came into my heart, and I began a new life. I also devoted myself to spreading the gospel. I think that the Holy Spirit caused all these things, and I believe that He dwells in me. Don't you think of it as the same way? Answer You have really had an amazing experience. I have heard many confessions from people who dedicated their lives to the Lord after experiencing God's answers to their prayers. However, I would like to ask you if this amazing supernatural experience could be the definite proof that you received the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, many Christians nowadays would answer yes to the question above. When Western Christianity was in decline amid the growth of materialism, the so-called Pentecostal charismatic movement arose and Christianity revived tremendously especially in the underdeveloped or developing countries. As a result, many Christians fell under the influence of the Pentecostal charismatic movement, which stresses the importance of supernatural experience. Those who lead revival meetings sometimes obtain worldwide fame as evangelical revivalists. Furthermore, because they have surprising testimonies of their own and express their own faith through their experiences, their followers pursue experience-based faith like them. However, the Bible says no to the question above. Of course, the Holy Spirit has the ability to give us supernatural experiences. However, because He is the Spirit of Truth, John chapter 15, verse 26, we can receive the Holy Spirit only through the Word of Truth. Peter received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost and confidently preached the gospel, saying, God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Then the Jews who heard this said to Peter and the other apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Acts chapter 2, verses 36 through 37. He answered them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children, and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. Acts chapter 2, verses 38 through 39. In other words, God clearly said that he would give the Holy Spirit as a gift to the righteous who receive the remission of sin by believing in the remission of sin by believing in Jesus Christ's gospel. The only proof of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in one's heart is the word of truth. Have you received the remission of sin through the gospel of the water and the spirit? If so, you can be assured that the indwelling of the Holy Spirit has already taken place in you. However, No matter what amazing experiences you may have had or no matter how many wonders you have performed, you have definitely not received the Holy Spirit if you still have sin in your heart. The reason is that you don't have the witness of remission of sin based on the word of truth. Just as darkness can't be found in the light, the Holy Spirit can neither come on a sinner nor dwell with sin. Therefore, the true indwelling of the Holy Spirit only happens to people whose sins are completely washed away by the gospel of the water and the Spirit. God wants all people to hear the truth and to receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Now you can receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit by believing in the gospel of the water and the Spirit. I have received numerous other questions besides these, and you can find all the answers to them by having faith in Jesus' baptism by John and his blood on the cross. Now everyone who believes in Jesus can receive the Holy Spirit, which God promised to pour out on all of the last days. We give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah! This book contains a great deal of information on the Holy Spirit. This book will help you answer your questions. If you want to know more about the Gospel of the Water and the Spirit, please refer to the author's first two books of his Christian book series. Have you truly been born again of the Water and the Spirit? Return to the Gospel of the Water and the Spirit. God wants you to receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and wait for the Lord's coming. If you believe in God's words together with the author, you will receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and give glory to the Lord.